All right, guys, welcome back. Um, this is going to be part two now of our overall suspension lift. In the last uh, vlog, we got the rear all in and the shackles with the leaf packs and the spacers, and we got the wheels back on. So as you guys seen, the rear is all taken care of. And we got our parts truck all torn down. So we pulled off the front spacers Still not sure if we're gonna run them. They might be a little too much for what I want, but we'll see. Um, but we got the front spacers pulled off. The upper control arms are switched out. So we now have the upper control arms on this one and our stock crappy upper control arms put back on this. We got the torsion bars pulled out of our parts truck and I couldn't get the torsion bars out of our truck. So what we ended up doing as you guys can see right there is I had to pull the center um, frame part where the torsion bar connects to where you would make the adjustment and just unbolted it from the car itself and had to pull it out because mine after 220,000 miles were seized so we just had to end up swapping frames so it's not that hard it's four bolts so we'll put the frame from the other truck into this truck and then we'll pull our torsion bars back in, crank them down, and we should be good to go. Like I said yesterday, as you guys can see, yesterday we got our cow mini upper control arms put in. And these things are pretty cool because it looks like um, we can just grease the ball joints and then replace the ball joints as need be. So that was a pretty cool find. And we got those all put back in and tightened down yesterday. So now we just need to put our uh, our torsion bars back on. So let's get into that. This is pretty cool. If uh, if we were to compare, let's see. This would be the driver's side. So if we were to compare stock torsion bars versus these heavy duty upgrades, they look like they're almost twice as thick. So that'll be nice. So that'll be nice. That'll be a good upgrade for this car, um, especially with trying to max out this suspension lift doesn't hurt to have upgraded torsion bars. They're a pain in the butt to put in and take out, but I think once we get it all done and dialed in, it'll be more than worth it. So let's go ahead and start with throwing that cross member back in. Okay, so we got the driver's side taken care of and it looks like there's a decent amount of drop already in our driver's side. So now we'll try to match the passenger side the best we can and surprisingly these aren't as hard as I thought they were going to be to install. It just kind of sucks to line up the front where you don't want too much of the adjustment so you want it to go up inside of here more so you don't want it here <clears throat> you don't want this arm too far down because then by the time you max it out it could still be outside of the truck and you don't want it to catch on anything so it's finding that right position 
that way it'll sink up inside the truck like that so finding that is a little hard I'm trying to find the right area but I think I got it figured out um, so yeah so let's go ahead and put the passenger side torsion bar in and match the driver's side and then we'll put the wheels on and take a measurement and see if we have to lift the truck back up and there's still a little bit more adjustment on that side so we can crank it down a little bit more if not we'll have to pull it out clock it a couple teeth and then put it back in so hopefully we get this on the first try because i don't really want to take it back out so let's put this one in Okay, so we got the torsion bars in and everything's tightened down. Um, I matched them up the best I could from one side to the other. Um, but now we have to go back in and make an adjustment. But before you make any further adjustments, the best thing to do is to move the truck back and forth. Uh, just pull it forward and then reverse it just to kind of settle the suspension and the wheels out. And then if you can, put it onto a level surface, whether that be your street or like what we have the garage where you know it's flat and uh, you can get a real true measurement so as of right now we're about an inch off from front to back and then about an inch from side to side so we got to raise the driver's side up a little bit more to kind of like flex it back in and then uh and then we'll see so we'll go ahead and pull it forward reverse it into the garage onto the flat level and then double check our measurements and then um lift up the front and make our adjustments and we'll just keep doing that until we can get it as close as we can or until at least it looks good so let's go ahead and do that so i think we got the truck pretty well squared away for for me it's like we're even side to side on like driver to passenger, front and rear, um, but the front to the rear of the truck is only off by a little less than like an inch. So um, I think that's where we're gonna call it. The control arms kind of looked a little um, maxed out from the ball joints. But I did happen to notice, I don't know if you can see it, but I got this side pretty squared up but what I didn't realize is these trucks have camber bolts. So that was an interesting, I couldn't figure out why I had so much positive camber in, in my wheels now. And I just put the camber bolts in wrong. So I got that side adjusted completely the other way. So now it should be zero or really close to zero. So we're gonna do the same on this one and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So we'll take this wheel off. This right here is what I'm talking about. Those are your camber bolts for the upper control arms. And what we're gonna wanna do is take that, loosen that nut 
and then stick a 22 millimeter socket on the insides of these control arms and just turn them and they're kind of like an oval shape so as you turn them it'll either pull the control arm back or push it more forward and we want to try to knock the camber out of the wheels so we're going to rotate them towards and see here we'll rotate them towards the truck and that should take the camber out so let's go ahead and loosen those and uh, see if we can't take the camber out of this thing So I don't know if you guys could see the control arm coming in and out or not, but I think we got it as neutral as we could get it. So I'm gonna throw the wheel back on and then uh, drive out of the garage and see what she looks like. And that is where we're gonna call it. That is the install of our cow mini suspension lift. Everything is in. Um, I did have to go back through, like you guys just seen, I was messing with the camber on the wheels. Um, I went back through last night and also, did a um i did i did an alignment on my on my toe and because my wheels were both towed in so i got those pretty close to straight again and as you can see we got the bumper put on last night and one of the light bars um in um we had to go in and there was a piece i forgot the sway bar in links there was um a spacer on the other truck that I missed so I got those on this one and I dialed back our new uh, Ranchero struts I dialed the dampening back a little bit and it made the ride a little bit smoother but it is still pretty jarring so I'm gonna do some research I think uh, we might look into doing a steering stabilizer and uh, idle arm bracket and getting a new idle arm as well and possibly doing uh, sway bar bushings but <clears throat> as far as the ride quality not really sure how I can make that more comfortable it's just really stiff but yeah as you see we took it out took it for a little test still got some dialing in to do but for the most part everything is on the truck and we'll call it here we still have our body lift coming up next and I think that's about it for right now so stay tuned we've got more stuff coming like comment subscribe and we'll see you in the next one <laughs>